what, what, what was the major difference as far as, 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 as these different technologies uh, are concerned? What would you say is like, this is the defining factor really that separates all of them? Um, the first major difference is what they send around. They all send data around. That's the only thing they have in common. Yeah. Um, but how do they send that data around is the first major thing. There's really two levels. There's things that I do call protocols. Um, we call it the transport level. Uh, you know, MQTT fits into that. Co-app fits into that. They are just ways to send data. The data has no structure. So when you get the data, you know, you'll get a bunch of bytes and it could be uh, names of people. It could be feedback control, sensor readings. It could be uh, warnings about an impending explosion. And you would never know. <laughs> None of those things yeah. are, are in that data, just a bunch of bytes. So you have to know what it is ahead of time somehow. And that's sort of the first, you know, we have, that's, that's the transport layer versus the framework layer. Um, the framework layer, they actually, you still don't know what they mean necessarily, but now I can look at the data and say, okay, it's got a name and an address and a, um, you know, I don't know, a salary and I say, oh, this is a, this is a, a HR information. At least I know the name is a string and the address is a string with a number, which is the, the house number or something. You know, I can now do something with that data. I don't know what it means necessarily. I don't know that it's an HR database or if it's a, a mailing list where I'm going to send advertisements. I don't know why it's there, but I know sort of what it is and I can read it. Um, and the next, the next level up, which we did not really look at, is semantic. Now I know that it's, it's really a Christmas list and I'm going to send you a Christmas card. <laughs> <laughs> So I have meaning to it, yeah. but, you know, we, to the, the protocols, the framework layer are really only easy to use if you control the entire system. You're writing it all yourself. You don't have a lot of software in your system because it doesn't help you at all with sharing information. And importantly, because that data comes at you in whatever format it is, you can't easily switch between languages or processor types or operating systems, all that stuff's in the data, but you don't know where it came from. Um, at the, at the syntax level, now you can share it regardless of that. Um, so the, the, the technologies that offer a, a real framework, which are, you know, the ones that we looked at are, uh, DDS and OPC UA and, um, you know, 1M to M uh, really have way more than just a data definition. They have an entire uh, type monitor, uh, typing system so that I can use whatever language I want likely and I can, you know, interoperate now between software programs instead of interoperating between bytes I had to know what was in it. So that's a very that's a very valuable step, and it really is the critical step for anything that we found in in more complex industrial internet systems. Oh, okay, that's, so. yeah, interesting. Now maybe just to linger on that question a, a bit, uh, what what do you think about um, Spark Plug for 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 MQTT that try and and enrich the the MQTT uh, payload? That, so when we first looked at it, those things didn't really exist. Um, you know, if it becomes a standard, then it will take a step up and be more of a framework, right? If, it, if it's something that I can assume my other people in the organization in the, in the software system I'm using are also using Sparkplug, then I can interoperate with them at a, at a better level. Um, absolutely. But it's not a... It's not really a well, you know, now, now you have to agree on that too. Oh, yeah. It's not narrow and it's not nearly as well controlled as things like a, a DDS or an OPC UA that has a standards organization and very clear specifications on exactly 
exactly what data types are and exactly how those data types inter interact, uh, even if they don't exactly match. One of the big problems in a distributed system is um, distributed systems evolve. Um, so you can't really just update everything on one day especially if they're complex things, it may take years to retest them and redeploy them. Even with over-the-air updates getting more popular, it's still very difficult to guarantee that all the components of a big system are the same version. And so um, one of the things the frameworks can do, DDS can do, I don't, I don't know if, I, I think I'm 1M2M does it, I don't think OPC UA does it. Um, is it allows you to match things that have changed a little bit. So the data structure, now that I know I've got this, you know, this field with a name and three floats and whatever, and now I add another field to the end of it, uh, DDS is smart enough to match those anyway. So if I send it to an old version, it'll strip that field off. And if that old version sends me something, it'll add something that says, this is an old version. A flag or something, and then I can fix that in my code, but the fundamental system will still work. And we have systems in the field with 300 different versions of the same data type. <laughs> and then it's a big ship. And the nice thing, you can pull into port and you can throw a new device in the ship or upgrade one part of the software, and it will match all the other. It has to be standard. And the standard is very specific about what will match, but as long as it matches, it will make everything work. And now you don't have to upgrade it all at once. And if you're trying to do a smart city or some really large system, um, we have a healthcare uh, design for GE Healthcare is expecting 300,000 devices in a hospital. You, you just can't update all of those all at the same time. Uh, yeah. It, it's exactly. only because a lot of them are going to be pe keeping people alive at the moment. You can't reboot it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But in reality, there's security issues and all sorts of things with, in testing, you can't upgrade everything at once. There's hundreds of different kinds of things in the hospital, and you're all going to be ready to update at the same time. So those kinds of functionality aren't available with something like MQTT Spark. So that, that, that did make MQTT more valuable, but I still don't think it's a good choice for a large distributed system, especially if it has to do the kinds of things that the other technologies do much better. All the technologies do something really well. And, you know, my, my favorite example, I, I, I call it the space. And if you're close to a planet in space, you should absolutely use that, or a galaxy might be a better thing. You should use that galaxy's technology. If you're out in the middle of inter, inter, you know, inter, interstellar space, and there's a lot of interstellar space, yeah. and nothing really fits, well, now you can start playing games and writing your own code or making something fit. But most, surprisingly, most applications that we run into fit one of them reasonably well and hardly ever two. Never two. Oh, that's interesting. 